bring them here to Snake Mountain. I, Skeletor, command you. Welcome back to Retro Wednesday at the Tidarium Hangar. This is Mike, and today I want to talk to you about the Vintage Snake Mountain, and I want to talk about it for several reasons. First off, I did want to do a review of this, and as I said in my Castle Grayskull video, that I got this thing for like 17 bucks in a deal, and it's in really, really rough shape. I've been working on restoring it. I thought about maybe even doing a restoration video, but I'm probably not going to go that far. But the only reason I even picked it up is because I don't think they're going to make it in the Origins line. I don't think there's going to be opportunity. And down the road when people realize we're not going to get this in Origins line, it's probably going to be harder and harder to get as time goes by. So anyway, I picked it up, picked up some parts for it. It's not 100% complete. It's like 99% complete. But we're going to talk about this. And we're also going to talk about the issues and challenges with trying to get one of these and complete one of these in 2022. We're going to talk about all this fun stuff coming up. So this playset is really made for the outside. And in my opinion, it's not even a playset, it's more of a display piece. And a display piece that takes up a lot of space to use as a display piece. But starting, let's look at the features of it real quick. So right up here we have two features. You have, you have this snake head and you have this gate. And that's really all that's going on up there. And then of course, when we get to the inside, you can see this trap door function. That's one of the two things that you really do on the inside there or that you can check out. Maybe you could say three with the microphone. So with that, the gate doesn't really do much. It doesn't lock in place and there's no sword to open it. It just kind of opens and closes in and out, whatever. Now, I really think that this platform is the only reason that you'd really need the ladder. And that's, so we got a ladder that comes with it. Go moving down so you can kind of see the ladder. You have a, like a hole to go through, which... It's kind of silly in itself, but it, it's kind of adds a look to it, but it's not functional. And then you got like a long stairway. Now the whole point of the look of this thing, when you pan out on it, is that you've got a long stairway and then you got a rickety ladder or bridge, kind of like an Indiana Jones bridge, which inspired me to do my Indiana Jones bridge. And then you've got the rest of the way down here. Now it does not scale with the figure. So that part there is not in scale with the figures. It's really small and narrow, but it really would work well if you had a 3.75 inch figure. So as you can see, a vintage Scarlet, she's got the articulation and everything to look like she's walking up the side of the mountain. There's no way you can do that with a Motu figure. And also over here, you can see this is one of the, the newer, like 2008 Indiana Jones figures. He fits just fine on that ladder. In fact, uh, on the bridge, he could even go sideways like he's walking across the bridge. Again, something else you can't do with a Motu figure. And overall, this thing does feel too small. If you look at it, you can kind of say, this thing looks like it might have been made for a 3.75 inch scale. I don't know, it's interesting. Another feature of the bridge itself is that as you, you can adjust the size or the angle of your playset because this piece here slides in and out. So if you want to open or close your playset more, uh, which will probably knock all the figures off, I do that. But because it does that, you can open it and you can have different angles and all that kind of stuff. And you can make it at a different angle or more open or more closed or whatever. That's an interesting design feature. I don't know if they really needed to do that or not. So over here on this side, we have a couple of things going on. We have the jaw, which you operate from the inside. Uh, you can actually see there's a speaker comes through this area right here. So that's where the speaker sound comes from. And then a little bit higher up, we got what's kind of like a wolf head. I'm, I don't know, is that a snake or a wolf? Is that a, anyway, still, it's kind of interesting. This whole thing looks good. That's the one sort of redeeming quality to it is it's interesting looking playset, especially when it's set up for display. But then we get to another kind of, in my opinion, failed action feature. Okay, right here we have these chains and they're supposed to hold a figure in place. Now, the thing is, if you have it the way it's intended, the figure's kind of hanging off like this. Or if you want them to stand straight, you bend them and you break them. So most of them show up broken and I have tip. I can fix the tip. Uh, there it is, there's the tip of it. I can fix it. There's actually, it's not that hard. You just kind of drill it out and you do a pin like I've done before on other repairs. But it's a bad design 
these things, they should have been rubber. They probably would have broken down if they were rubber, though. But they're, either they're too long or there's just there's a bad design. It's maybe not a bad idea to have done it, but was there a better way to do it? I think there was, especially since all the figures are the exact same size. Seriously, sourcing unbroken ones on eBay would have cost me double or triple what I paid for the whole playset to start with. So I said, it doesn't matter that much to me. I have them, they're complete yet broken, but I don't really care. At the end of the day, it's mine and I just want to enjoy it. But for other people that have to have it perfect, uh, I wish there was a better reproduction out there. Someone reproduced them for a decent price because it wouldn't be that hard. Okay, so looking at the inside of the playset, and it looks kind of boring. There's not much going on in there. And really, when when you kind of think like the Castle Grayskull had two full levels, and all the play features were going on inside, and you still had a bit of a, well, a kind of nice presence on the outside. It looked like Castle Grayskull, the drawbridge, and all that kind of stuff. Getting in here can be a little bit boring. So... One of the things I want to say is that we should have had something else going on, or at least one central place that you should place your Skeletor in here. And that really is the best thing I could say about this. And as for that, it's like it doesn't really make sense where to place any of your other characters or any of your figures. Okay, so let's take a look at one of the features here, and it's kind of the wolf's head microphone. And one of the problems with this is the fact that Sometimes this wire will come disconnected from this. You can take it apart and solder it back together, I'm sure. I didn't mess with that. I just got one that's connected. And you turn it on right here. Now, always, I always see this uh, lost. I do have some corrosion in here. And I was starting to clean it out, but it was working. And so I figured I'd do the video with it working. I'll go after the corrosion and maybe it might not work anymore if I... Sometimes when I clean the corrosion, I do kind of mess up the electronics, so... Hello? Hello? Um, excuse me? Uh, I think y'all are just too darn loud. Yeah, you're too darn loud. Marty McFly. That sounds terrible. But that's 80s. Uh, you got feedback from it. You got all that stuff from the 80s and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, this feature always, to me, I was like, what's the point of the echo chamber thing? It was an echo box. Going down a little bit lower here, you do see some stickers where you see like a lizard, some bones and stuff. Now, this thing was disgustingly filthy. I cleaned it three times. I do think it needs a fourth and a fifth cleaning because it was so filthy when I got it. You know, that's what you get when you get it for 17 bucks. But I want to preserve the original stickers. I want to talk about this. I don't know. I don't know if they make uh, reproduction stickers for it. I imagine they do since they have made it for Castle Grayskull and all that kind of stuff. But... You know, why destroy your original stickers if you have them in pretty good shape? So cleaning it is not the same because one good cleaning with uh, a pressure washer or something would have gotten the job done, but I was very gentle cleaning. So that's why I need like two more gentle cleanings on this to get the rest off of it. But uh, over here, we got like lizards and stuff like that. So uh, yeah. So moving on up, we're going to look at some of these other action features. Now we do have the snake that moves back and forth. And mine doesn't really click in place. It doesn't feel like it is in there solid at all. And it feels like it comes out real easy. I did not like that. So uh, that's an issue. Also, uh, here is the gate that opens up. And then we, we get to see this whole mechanism here. So the trap door has multiple issues. And the big problem with the trap door is the fact that it's really small. I mean ridiculously small and there it goes and you're supposed to fit a masters of the universe figure in there and so for it to just function and fall just right is like there's a one percent chance that you're going to get that right i mean it's just not going to work but anyway you're supposed to fall into this net and you can catch the net now let's talk a little bit about the net i actually watched a couple of videos about snake mountain right when i got mine and there's very little talking about all these things but uh, this net, it's interesting because you connect it with like a double-sided connector. And you could, I guess, clip in to the net wherever on either side of it, which like I did on this side over here, and then roll it up to your desired height. And this particular one, the guy had 
some string tied into it that I, this a lot, a lot of white pieces of string tied into it for whatever reason, I don't know. Uh, and cutting those out a hundred percent is going to make me cut out, cut my net. I don't want to cut my net, but it's like, like, let's say you want hit the net to be a little shorter. You could unplug it and then just wind it and you can have it a little shorter like so. And that's, that's just interesting. I don't know if that's a, a feature or or what i don't know i don't know i mean I, i'm looking i'm grabbing at straws here for some inside features so one idea maybe would it make for a backdrop like could you just set this up and put some classic figures in front of it i guess you could in a way i mean it's not really going to be cohesive it's too small for the five and a half inch figures it's going to be too small for the seven inch figures but it does look kind of nice though i mean that's the one redeeming quality of this playset is it's a beautiful purple it looks nice it's a nice backdrop so there is some good to it let's see what it looks like on the other side so how does this look with some classics figures it, it actually doesn't look that bad uh probably would i would ditch the old bridge the rickety bridge and just open it up completely wide probably would look even better like that and you can stack probably eight or ten in front of it maybe you can use some risers uh, above them and stack it I don't know. These are just some ideas I'm coming up with. Like, what would you want to do with this thing? Because when I look at other people's displays, I never really see this doing anything. It's just sitting there. And so uh, I'm curious if you have a display and you have it set up, what are you doing with it? All right. So here they are side by side, the Castle Grayskull with good old Snake Mountain. And I got to say that it's way smaller than Castle Grayskull. And it does have a handle right here, like a carrying case handle. And side by side, yeah. These even don't, don't even look like they're for the same toy line size-wise. Like they don't scale together very well at all. So there's a downside. But they did improve the way it closes. It does feel more like a carrying case with sort of the snap pieces here. And it's less problematic and it doesn't break as easily as the way the castle closes and then those get bent up and broken and stuff. So these are made to bend, made with a proper type of plastic that's going to be a little bit bendy to it. So, but side by side, yeah, the castle's still overall more iconic and a better playset overall. But this does look kind of freaky and cool. It just looks like it's from a different toy line. So this was my look at the Vintage Snake Mountain. And I got to say, it's it's a pretty nice looking playset. With all the paint apps and all the colors and all that come together, it does actually look quite nice. The few play features, I don't think that they exactly work so well, but they do okay. Uh, it's all right that they tried to include it. Some of the stuff doesn't work, some of it does, but does it work well? Is it something that really adds value to it? I don't really know. I'm gonna say I'm glad I picked one up. I'm glad I went through the process of kind of sort of getting it complete. I don't know if I'm even gonna go after the battery cover and I'm definitely not going after complete unbroken chains. I think that's ridiculous that the, the amount of money people are asking for that. But if you're interested in getting one of these, like you could still get one now for a pretty good price. I would suggest that you buy one mostly complete for the best price you can and then maybe find that extra piece later or be like me and just not care and just have it missing a part. It's not a big deal to me. Anyway, let me know what you think about this playset. Do you have one of these? Do you display it? If you do, I'm curious how you display it. And do you have other snake mountains that you think the Origins one's ever going to get made? Because I don't. Like, subscribe to the Hanger out. Be the